Oh my gosh, what a game. I don't even know how I'm going to cover everything that we just saw. Madness, pure madness. But the first thing that I need to say, and do this for me, if your team is top of the league, hit that like button. I love saying that, man. Arsenal still top of the league. Ten games gone, nine wins. Crazy. We haven't drawn a game this season. Only team in the Premier League not to have drawn a game. And, well, hey, I'll take it. What a brilliant, brilliant return from the first 10 games of the season. Best start ever to a top flight campaign. Mikel Arteta is doing it. And now a lot of you might be saying today, oh, we weren't very good. Yes, second half especially, we got dominated. Leeds absolutely battered us. But listen, man, I don't know how many of you people watching have actually seen your team win a league, right? Some of you might be too young because we haven't won a league in so flipping long. Some of you might be too young to have actually seen what it takes to win a league. Let me tell you one thing, right? That performance today, that type of performance, that dogged performance, that bit of luck as well, that's what you need to win leagues. It doesn't matter who you are. Even this Man City team that looks like, you know, they're just going to, walk it because they're playing so so well even they will need an element of luck as the season goes on and yeah Arsenal got that today you know with that penalty especially Arsenal got that today but you know you do make your own luck and and we'll talk about that in a bit more detail as we continue this but you know Arsenal have have had a really good start to the season but it's not like we're playing amazing free-flowing football all of the time yesterday Tottenham beat Everton and a lot of Arsenal fans I see were giving Tottenham a bit of stick saying oh whenever I watch them they don't play well this that the other but you know what imagine Tottenham fans watching Arsenal today they'd be thinking yeah Arsenal they can't keep this up they're going to come crashing down but actually no do you know what you do need to graft sometimes Man City are a bit of an exception in my view how they go and turn teams over four nil every week but it doesn't matter how many goals you score. It's all about getting those three points. And Arsenal did what they needed to do today. And when I speak about making your own luck, I'll give you a couple of examples. There was a moment in the game today where there was a shot at goal and Gabriel uh, hit his chest and went out for a throw on, uh, went out for a corner. Now, when you look at that in slow-mo again, when you watch the replay, instinctively, Gabriel's arms are behind his back. Chest is out, but his arms are behind his back. On another day, if he doesn't do that, then it's a, a penalty and, you know, you're, you're likely going to concede from a penalty. The difference with Saliba's, who was absolutely brilliant, again, I thought, as was Gabriel, other than at the end, and we'll talk about that, the difference there was he didn't have that discipline. He didn't expect the ball to come down and he kind of left his arms there. And in this day and age of football, you're running that risk. Very, very fortunate not to concede from that penalty. But you see... It is moments like what Gabriel did well and Saliba didn't do very well. That's what I'm talking about. You make your own luck a lot of the time with Gabriel and sometimes you get lucky like Saliba. And another thing in terms of making your own luck, and my example was Gabriel again. From the goal that we scored, people might look at that and say, Rodrigo, what was he thinking with that sort of aimless crossfield pass that gave Arsenal the ball? But you know what? That is not just a case of um, getting lucky, like we got lucky with the penalty miss. That's a case of making your own luck. When you're playing in a game and you know every single time you get the ball, there's a man on you, a man like hassling you non-stop, you stop wanting the ball. You stop wanting to receive the ball back to goal, having to do the hard thing over and over again with a man on your back constantly. And that's what I saw in that moment. That was Rodrigo sort of not really being comfortable on the ball and wanting to get it out of his feet as quickly as possible. And sometimes you don't make the right decisions when you're under that much pressure. It was purely as a result of Gabriel following him, making sure he doesn't have the opportunity to turn. Rodrigo can hear him, he can feel him, he can smell him on his back there. Gabriel's done his job well and that's why Rodrigo's played that pass going across the pitch. And then Saka and Erdegaard have done the rest. So, Gabriel was going to come under a lot of criticism from me because of what he did at the end. But up to that point, I thought he had a really, really good game. And those two moments where discipline of keeping his arm behind his back, doing the right thing in a, in a defensive manner, and then also being that sort of 
aggressive defender following your man far up the pitch, forcing him into a mistake. That's how you turn the ball over in difficult, in, in um, dangerous, difficult positions for the opposition and make it count. And that is, that's exactly what we did. So well done to Gabriel for that. And now let's talk about the bad side of what he did. What sort of clown was he acting like in injury time where, oh my God, it's so frustrating. If you're going to do something stupid and you do it earlier on in the game, at least there's time to respond. But what he did at the end there, if it wasn't for VAR, and my God, referees, why is it that they're so eager, so determined to make stupid decisions for Arsenal? I just, I don't get it. But obviously we'll get into the referee. But what the hell was Gabriel doing? Let me know in the comments below how you saw that incident. I, for one, am livid. The first phase of play there where he stood firm in front of Bamford, that's absolutely fine. I do not mind that. But if you're going to do that, you know you're inviting a challenge from Patrick Bamford. So why are you getting bothered? Why are you getting upset when Bamford then decides to barge into you? That's what you're playing for. So if that's what you're playing for, that shows that you've got a bit of tactical nous, a bit of game management. But then when he re reacts like that, it's almost like he was expecting something different. What did you expect Bamford to do? Run round you? Run past you? I, I, I'm so baffled by that. Just a massive rush of blood to the head. Maybe he didn't expect Bamford to run into him with the pace that he did or something. And, and the way Bamford did it might have annoyed him. But come on, such an amazingly um, tough team performance. So much discipline, so much work, so much effort from your entire team. And you're willing to let all of that go because you don't like what an opposition player has done to you in the last, last seconds of the game. We need to be better than that. All three points could have, or, you know, we could have dropped two points today instead of getting all three points. I would have been livid at Gabriel had we not got out of jail for that. And in fact, you know what? I'm still livid at him. The thing that I find amazing is that the referee, he's clearly seen Gabriel being barged over. How have you not realized that that's a foul? And then so quick to go and give Gabriel the red card. For, for the stupid kick out. And yes, it was a stupid kick out. And Gabriel needs a slap for what he did. He needs a massive, massive like um, word in his ear from the manager and, and from, his, from his teammates. Because if he let the team down and we dropped two points, that would have been such a sucker punch. Massive sucker punch. But very lucky to get away with it. But even from the referee, I don't understand it. Obviously, I've said I don't understand him not giving the foul on, on uh, Gabriel from the Patrick Bamford barge. But then how has he then changed the red card to a yellow card afterwards? That I'm just confused by. Because clearly, he, he seemed to see that uh, Gabriel kicked out of Bamford, which he did. So why are you changing your mind? I don't get it. It's still a red card. But yeah, it's not a penalty because the foul would have already been given for the first foul from Bamford and Gabriel. Just a mess. An absolute mess in terms of refereeing the game, understanding when the play stops, when the penalty can and can't be given. You know, nothing changed in what Gabriel did. So the red card for me should have still stood. And we got very lucky that actually he overturned it and gave him a yellow. I'll take it all day. But he's had a nightmare there. Gabriel's had a nightmare. They've all had a nightmare. But, but the biggest nightmare of all, and I can't believe that there's so much to talk about that I haven't even had an opportunity to talk about this yet, is the goddamn Premier League and the technology. I mean, look, tell me how you stand on this or where you stand on this. Is it an absolute disgrace that the biggest and the best league in the world, as so many people say, and as the Premier League like to um, say as well, that they don't have a backup system in place in, in case of a malfunction? There would have been away fans today that have booked a train and now have got to make a decision. Do I leave the game significantly early or do I just, you know, chance it, watch the game, support my team and then just chance it? It's a joke. I mean, you can imagine if in Qatar in the World Cup that happened, people would be laughing at Qatar, at their poor organisation, their poor technology, how they're not fit to handle the top level football games. And here we are, the Premier League. Let me know in the comments below. Is this the case of, oh, it's just happened once, you forgive them, next time it needs to be better, or is it just unacceptable? Think about it from this perspective. That was such a massive, massive error on the part of the, the Premier League. Imagine if Arteta had made an error that big. As far as I'm concerned, that's like saying, Gabriel Jesus, you're in goal today. Is this an error of those proportions? 
That's like Granit Xhaka going in two-footed in the six-yard box and giving away a penalty. It's an error of those proportions. And players, managers, everyone associated with football in the Premier League is held to such high standards. Referees, they're held to high standards. Obviously, there's no consequences for them, but still they get massive amounts of criticism. So surely the Premier League today should be getting a huge amount of criticism for not having a plan in place to mitigate a failure of that technology. For me, I think really it's unacceptable. And fine, first time you can kind of say, absolutely ridiculous, you better learn from it. If that happens again, then honestly, what an absolute joke. I think it was embarrassing for the Premier League today, seeing the referee go up to the goal with a ball in his hand, manually putting it over the goal line. Come on, that's a bit of a circus. A lot went wrong today, but what didn't was Arsenal get the three points. We can now watch Liverpool Man City, which has already obviously kicked off um, in, a, in, in fully relaxed mode. And hopefully Liverpool take some points from Man City because I don't know if we're ready for that conversation yet. I keep on saying this, but ultimately Man City are going to want Arsenal to be dropping points. Clearly we're a threat to them. Liverpool will continue to be a threat and I think you have to respect what they've done in recent seasons. But it's a massive, massive win for Arsenal today. I'm hoping Man City lose because... The more points Man City drop whilst we're plugging away and getting three points every single week, the more chance there is of us being able to have that conversation about being title contenders. I don't think we're there yet. I'll be honest with you. I don't think we're there yet. But from what I saw of that team performance today, everyone doing the right thing. Saka Martinelli working so hard, coming back, defending, helping the team out. Ramsdale doing what he needs to do. Saliba Gabriel doing really well. Our midfielders, again, doing very well. Second half, yeah, we got battered, but we were resolute. We were robust defensively. So, all in all, that's what makes title-winning teams. When the going gets tough, you stand up. You stand up firm and you make sure you get not just something out of the game, but all three points out of the game. Loved the performance today, even though, yes, it wasn't, you know, lovely free-flowing football but I loved it for different reasons this is the team that was determined to take the three points and they didn't give up so big credit to the team big credit to Mikko Arteta and remember if your team's top of the league make sure you hit that like button if you haven't already subscribed please do and thank you to the sponsors Y Food for sponsoring this match day check them out in the link below until next time top of the league see you later